Our objective for this lesson is to determine zero, intercept, and asymptote of exponential functions. Prerequisite knowledge needed for this lesson are laws of exponents, solving exponential equations, and property of equality for exponential equation. So let's start first with zero of exponential function. It is the value of the independent variable, x, that will make the function equal to zero. In a graph, it is the x-coordinate of the point intersecting the x-axis. So how do we solve for the zero of exponential function? We have two steps. First, equate the function equal to zero and then solve for the value of x. Let's start. Number one, first step, let us equate the function equal to zero. Now think of a number that will make the function equal to zero. Let us substitute values for x. Let us say negative 1. So 5 raised to negative 1. And that is equal to 1 over 5, not 0. Let us say 0. 5 raised to 0. 5 raised to 0 is equal to 1, also not equal to 0. How about positive number? Let us say 1. 5 raised to 1. 5 raised to 1 is still 5, not equal to 0. Therefore, there is no number that will make our function equal to zero. So, there is no zero for f of x, meaning there is no part of the graph that touches the x-axis. Another one, h of x is equal to 3 raised to 4x minus 3 minus 1. So, first step again, let us equate the function equal to zero. To solve for x, let us move first negative 1 on the other side. Now, from what we have learned, we have to make our bases the same. So, I'm going to express 1 as 3 raised to 0. Isn't it that 3 raised to 0 is equal to 1? So, as if I did not change anything. Now, our bases are the same. So, let us now focus on our exponents. So, we have 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. To solve for x, let us move negative 3 to the other side. And then let us divide both sides by 4. So 4 and 4 will be cancelled out. Let's continue. So x is equal to 3 over 4. Therefore, the 0 of h of x is 3 fourths. It means that the graph touches the x-axis at x equals 3 fourths. Another example, again first, let us equate the function equal to 0. To solve, let us first move negative 3 to the other side, and then let us make our bases the same. So I'll express 27 as 3 cubed, and then copy raised to x equals 3. Then I'll multiply the exponents here, so this will be 3x, and my exponent here is 1. So I have 3 raised to 3x is equal to 3 raised to 1. Now that my bases are the same, I'll focus now on the exponents. So 3x is equal to 1. To solve for x, let us divide both sides by 3. So 3 and 3 will cancel out. So x is equal to 1 third. Therefore, the 0 of g of x is equal to 1 third. Another one. Okay, I'll skip the part wherein I equate this to 0. I'll just move this expression to the other side. So I have this one. Now I'm going to make this as a base of 5 because this is 5 and this is 5 raised to 4. Now moving up the expression, it will be 5 raised to negative 4. Now I have the same basis. I'll equate now the exponents. So 2x plus 3, negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So I'll be having 2x plus 4x is equal to negative 8 minus 3. 2x plus 4x is 6x. Negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. So I have 6x equals negative 11. And then I'll divide both sides by 6. So I'll be having x equals negative 11 over 6. Therefore, the 0 of f of x is negative 11 over 6. This time, let's have intercepts of exponential function. These are the points of intersection of the graph to the axis. First one, the x-intercept. This is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. All you have to do is to set y equal to 0. 
Next one is the y-intercept. This is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. All you have to do is to set x equal to 0. For example, g of x is equal to 5 raised to x minus 125. Let's start with x-intercept. Set y be equal to 0, but we do not have y. So, we are going to replace g of x with y. So, replacing this with y, y is equal to 5 raised to x minus 125. Then, we set y equal to 0. So, this will be 0 equals 5 raised to x minus 125. And then, we solve for x. So, to solve for x, let us first move negative 125 to the other side. So, 125 is equal to 5 raised to x. Next, I have to make the bases the same. So, I'll replace 125 with 5 cubed. Now, my bases are the same. So, I'll focus now my attention to the exponents. 3 is equal to x or x is equal to 3. My x is 3. My y is 0. Therefore, the x-intercept is 3, 0. Next is the y-intercept. So we're going to set x equal to 0. But first, again, let us replace g of x with y. And then let us let x be equal to 0. So this is y equals 5 raised to 0 minus 125. And then let us solve for y. So, 5 raised to 0 is 1. So, you have y is equal to 1 minus 125. And 1 minus 125 is negative 124. So, your x is 0. Your y is negative 124. Therefore, your y-intercept is 0, negative 124. Next example. So, let's start with the x-intercept. Again, let us replace f of x with y. So we have, and then let us let y be equal to 0. So this is 0 equals 3 raised to x plus 2 minus 9. And then let us solve for x. So first, let us move negative 9 to the other side. So we will be having 3 raised to x plus 2 equals positive 9. Then let us make our bases the same. So I'll replace 9 with 3 squared. Now that my bases are the same, I can ignore them. So, x plus 2 is equal to 2. To solve for x, let us move 2 to the other side. 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. x is 0, y is 0. Therefore, the x-intercept is 0, 0. Next is the y-intercept. First, let us replace f of x with y. And then, let us let x be equal to 0. So, we're going to replace this with 0. So, y is equal to 3 raised to 0 plus 2 minus 9. Then, let us solve for y. 0 plus 2 is 2. So, y is equal to 3 squared minus 9. 3 squared is 9. So, 9 minus 9 is equal to 0. x is 0. y is 0. Therefore, the y-intercept is 0, 0. Another example. Again, let's start with the x-intercept. Since this is already y, let me just copy the function and then let y be equal to 0. Then solve for x. So to solve for x, first I'm going to transpose this expression to the other side to make this positive. Now I have three bases. To make my bases the same, I'll replace 32 with 2 to the fifth power. Now, laws of exponents, when you are multiplying expressions with the same base, copy the base and add the exponents. So, 2 raised to 5 plus x minus 3. Copy equals 2. Simplifying this, 5 plus x minus 3, 5 minus 3 is 2. So, 2 raised to 2 plus x is equal to 2. Now that my bases are the same, I'll ignore them. The exponent here is 1, so I have 2 plus x is equal to 1. To solve for x, move 2 to the other side. So x is equal to 1 minus 2, and that is negative 1. My x is negative 1, my y is 0, therefore the x-intercept is negative 1, 0. Next, y-intercept. Again, let me copy the function. Then let x be equal to 0. So I'll replace this with... 0. Then, solve for y. So, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. To evaluate this, I'll bring 2 raised to negative 3 down. So, it will be negative 32 
over 2 cube. Remember, when you bring the expression down, the negative exponent will become positive. Copy plus 2. 2 cube is equal to 8. Negative 32 over 8 is negative 4. Copy plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Our x is 0. Our y is negative 2. Therefore, the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Let's have one more. Again, let's start with the x-intercept. Since this is already y, I'll start with let y be equal to 0. But first, allow me to convert these decimals into fractions. So, 1.5 is 3 over 2 and 0 0.75 is 3 fourths. Then, solve for x. So, let us move negative 3 fourths on the other side. That will become positive. Let us simplify this by dividing both sides by 1 half. So 1 half and 1 half here will be cancelled out. For this side, let us get the reciprocal of 1 half and that is 2 over 1. And let's multiply it with our numerator. So 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 4 is 4. So I have here 6 over 4 equals this expression. Now, simplifying 6 over 4, that is 3 halves. So, 3 halves is equal to 3 halves raised to x plus 3. Now, my bases are the same. I can equate now the exponents. The exponent here is 1. So, 1 is equal to x plus 3. To solve for x, move 3 to the other side. So, 1 minus 3 is equal to x. And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So, my x is negative 2, my y is 0, therefore, the x-intercept is negative 2, 0. For the y-intercept, let x be equal to 0. So, I'm going to replace this x with 0, but I'm still going to use the equivalent fraction of these decimals. So, I have, then solve for y. 0 plus 3 is 3. Distributing 3 here, 3 cubed is 27, and 2 cubed is 8. 1 times 27 is 27, and 2 times 8 is 16. Copy minus 3 fourths. LCD is 16. 16 divided by 16 is 1 times 27 is 27. 16 divided by 4 is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 27 minus 12 is 15, so I have 15 over 16. My x is 0, y is 15 over 16. Therefore, the y-intercept is 0, 15 over 16. Now, let us have asymptote. Asymptote is drawn as dashed line to which a graph gets closer and closer as the x or y increases or decreases its value without bound. Asymptote serves as boundary line which the graph of the function approaches. There are three kinds of asymptotes, vertical, horizontal, slant, or oblique. But exponential functions only have horizontal asymptote. So, horizontal asymptote of exponential functions, again, graphed as horizontal dashed line. The graph gets closer and closer as the x increases or decreases its value without bound. And the exponential function of the form f of x equals a times b raised to x minus c plus d has horizontal asymptote at the line y is equal to d. If there is no d, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So let's have some examples. So for number 1, this is our d. Therefore, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. Next one. Since we do not have d here, therefore, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Another one. Now, this is a little bit tricky. Our D is written here in front. So, our horizontal asymptote is Y equals 3. And last one. Oh, a little bit confusing. First, let us move negative 1 to the other side. And then, let us eliminate this 2 here by multiplying both sides by 2. So, 2 and 2 here will cancel out. On this side, let us distribute 2. So, 2 times 4 raised to x minus 1. And then here, 2 times 1 is plus 2. So, our d here is 2. Therefore, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. Here is the summary of what we have discussed. This time, let us check your understanding. Pause this video for more time.
Let us answer. Letter A, zero of a function. So let us equate our function equal to zero. To solve, let us move negative 27 to the other side. And then I'll replace 27 with 3 cubed. Now that I have the same basis, I can equate now the exponents. So 3 is equal to x plus 4. Solving for x, move 4 to the other side. So 3 minus 4 is equal to x. And 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Therefore, the zero of the function is negative 1. Next, the x-intercept. This is a shortcut. The x value is the same as the zero of the function, and that is negative 1. So your x is negative 1, and your y is 0. So your point is negative 1, 0. For the y-intercept, let x be equal to 0. So I'll replace this with 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. 3 to the 4th is 81. 81 minus 27 is 54. So my x is 0, my y is 54. Therefore, my y-intercept is 0, 54. And last one, the horizontal asymptote. My d is negative 27. Therefore, horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 27. Gets 